peacock leech is the name uh, that uh, I like to call it. Uh, it's a BC pattern and uh, they weigh it. Uh, you, can, you don't have to weigh it, but they do weigh it there. And uh, it's fished early in the uh, spring and late in the fall. Now, uh, leech, leeches are out at that time and uh, I, I forge for them. I, I go right from shore and I cast out with a full sink line a nine foot leader and I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it right into the weeds even and I'll pull it right back out. And if any of you have seen me fishing that way out at the lakes here, I just drop it and, and I take off with a little John boat that I have with electric troll motor and I head her out. So, and, and then I turn it around and I, I just start stripping and I'll let it sit. And the, the unique thing about this fly, what I notice with this fish, of, of rainbows and the, and, the, uh, and the species that we're fishing for, browns and rainbows. But uh, the, the rainbows will actually attack it. And they, they'll hit it. So you gotta wait for them to take, take the fly. So they'll come and, and I, I notice that several times when I fish this fly, they'll hit it. That's stunning the, the uh, prey. And, and uh, the leech itself, it curls up into a ball. When it stops, it curls up into the ball. So when they stun it, then they come back for it and they'll take it. So you gotta wait for the take, all right? So we're gonna get started here. I got your attention now, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> That's most of us are still really stunned. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna be tying with the uh, C53S, and I use a size six. A lot of people go, boy, he uses a big hook. I use a big hook because the fish love big flies. I always, I always tie with a size six in my vise for my wet flies and, and any of your searching patterns. So I want you to debarb. I'm going to add some weight to the fly. 0.025 to 2 thou. It's not very necessary to what size the weight of the wire is. Some people like to know. How many wraps? Well, 12, depending on the size of the wire. 20, don't get too far up on the head. Beginners are known for getting too tight up on the head. And they wonder why they can't get any tying off on their fly. Okay, the wire in. Six odd black thread, uni thread. Get it started, wrap it right over. Nice and tight. Again, both ends of the wire will make a little bump. She doesn't have anywhere to move. And I'll also coat it with uh, some super glue just to uh, seal the non toxic lead anyway. but. It's just to hold it in place. That's a preference again. Okay, tie it in. The most important thing you want to use is a good pair of scissors. I've had these Thompsons mm -hmm. for at least 20 years, and I'll tell you, they've been sharp ever since I bought them. You never sharpened them? But you want to make sure you don't use the tip of your scissors to go ahead and, and trim off wires and stuff like that. Always use the butt end inside, right? So that you don't have that problem. And they won't, they won't dull on you. Okay. Yes, I do buy other scissors, of course. Um, all right. So now we're gonna get the tail. Um, it's a Marabou Blackstrom Marabou. I like the uh, hook and hackle material. And there's a few other super flies coming out with it now. It's a decent, 
decent material. So where are we? Well, we're going to be tying in the butt section of the tail. Excuse me. Keep, keep your uh, bob, bobbin tight and uh, I'll raise it up a little bit, not much, just to secure it. <coughs> Presentation of, of building a body is very important. So you measure it, present it, switch your hands over, pinch technique. Come in, up, pinch, down. It's slack. See that? Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Slack. Okay? That's what you want. You have to readjust. Okay. I like the tail long. Get it in there, secure it, and come back. I knew this table would give me some grief tonight. Okay. I'll come around once. This is a Bob Guidus does this. Showed me this trick over the flies, and I just love it. it. Secures that tail in real nice. All right, trim off the excess. Okay, we're going to come forward and just wrap that in. You're going to be tying in your uh, underbody, which is going to be the peacock dubbing material from Superfly. They call it the ice dubbing. Now, this is where I'll make a loop. Come in about, take it about six. I'll go five to six inches with it. Bring it around. Now you're going to tie it. This is called the double loop, right? Okay. So now you're bringing it over and you're going to tie it in. Now watch. I'll come right into it. See that, everyone? All right. Now what that does is that secures it right at the base of your, of your, uh, of your fly. Nice and tight. Now what I do. The old crochet hook. See that? Just bent that with a pair of pliers. I've had that for 20 some odd years or <laughs> since the beginning of fly tying. Okay, take your material, bring it in. Now, watch. I twisted a couple loops in there just to keep that from parting. I see it's parted already, so I'll just go back and grab that. Easy now. Rod, if you wrap your, your thread around your loop. All right. Now, we're going to just bring that up. <coughs> It'll make its way up there by itself and stay there for you. Okay? Mm -hmm. Some of these guys use the twirling dubbing tool. Works pretty good also. I'm just used to my old habits. Tries to get away give it a twist. Send it up there. Send it home. And it's not heavy on the dubbing, okay? You just pull a little bit off. It doesn't have to be heavy. It'll make its way in there nice and tight. Sorry, I'm used to pulling that down. All right. You we'll see that? Never in there. Nice and tight. All right. Got her in there. 
I suppose it's moving on music. Mm -hmm. I don't like this table. It likes to collapse. Anyway, get that twisted in there, watch. Don't worry about the butt sections. It'll get tight. And I do this with all of my dubbing material. Tie it in so it's standing up. Especially the seal fur. You want it standing up to the 90 degree of the hook. Now when you pull on that, see, it tightens up. So you take your tackle pliers. Move your, advance your thread halfway up. Approximate. Okay. Now we're going to bring that in. And I'll pull on it. Lay it down. See that? You're going to have stuff coming out of it. You'll shake it out. Okay. Stop there. Gonna tie off. Because we want to build a section of it, right? Okay. Get some more marabou out. <coughs> Strong marabou has a string, so you gotta cut it sometimes. Release it. <coughs> Let me see what you're saying. All right. Now we're going to come in there and right beside it, you see, in the section of it, you're going to tie that in. And you just continue to build the body that way, all the way up. Pinch technique again. Why am I using the pinch? Well, what it does is it secures the material on top of the shank. Okay. Tie it in. Don't worry about it. You're going to get there with the body materials. As long as you got that tied in. Now you come in with your scissors, trim that off. Now always hoping you don't trim the thread. We all know about that. Okay, secure that in. And you can get some more on there. I said, don't worry about that body, it'll, it'll take itself up. All right. At this point, I like to take my hand and just wet it a bit, tames it down a bit. All right, and you take a little crystal flash in the green, pull a couple of strands out. You don't have to be particular with it. side and then come over to the other side. It's just to uh, designate the body a bit. You can trim that after. Okay. Got enough there for another section. And you just keep stacking it for yourself. But good marabou is important okay, on this fly. In the black, as you can see, the fingers get a little dark in that. You don't want to be 
Have you done another color? Have you done another color? Oh yeah. Okay, here we go. Again, just right before and uh, bringing your presentation to the fly and you're landing it just on top of the other one. So you get the nice segment. If it's bulky material, uh, what about circling the material with the rabbit thread and then pulling that down on the train? Say that again? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. If it's bulky material, the rabbit thread would not. What about circling the material with the rabbit thread and then pulling that down on the train? Yeah, well, um, that is to do with the, you're talking about the marabou itself, aren't you? Right. Right. Yeah, you'll get that with some of the marabou. With some of the marabou, remember, when you have that, if it's that bulky and, it, and like what he's talking about is the, the material of the, of the, of the uh, feather. Now, when you get that, you'll see inside here, you've got the stem. And the stem, some of them are really stiff and hard. So that's when you want to do this technique. Down lower, right? Oh, sorry. How's that? Better? A little lower because you were, you were behind the fly. There you go. Below the fly and a little bit to the front. <laughs> <laughs> Under the eye. Behind. Go on the front. There. Okay. So we hold it there and we just take the stem and we strip down. See that? And you roll, roll it. You roll it down. And it'll stand up. And, and yes. You see, you're doing the same thing as what a strong marabou uh, material is. See that, everyone? Okay. All right, same idea. Um, your strong marabou's already got that pretty well in place for you. If it's good material, some of this stuff, you get it in a batch and you'll get some bad material. So again, it's, it's what you look at when you open up that when you open, you got to go to these fly shops and look at some of this stuff. You'd be surprised. You get it home and go, Jesus, that bread pot? You know what? Look at the material you're buying. You know, is it worth what you're buying? And, and especially today, the market's really changing out there with some of this material. You can get a lot of junk inside the bag, stuffed in between some of your good stuff. So look at it. Check it out. Don't pull the whole darn thing out. You have a guy coming at you, all on the screen. What do you do? Anyway. They know you, you get used to it. Again, coming in. How's she look? Pretty good, eh? Yummy. Can't see your hands are in the way. Okay. All right, and then I put one more strand of the crystal flash in there. The reason, I just like it on the body. When this gets wet, it, it's gonna label itself alongside, right? And uh, it just seems to give a little flash to that Mr. Rainbow and let them see what's it's got a hit there. And I'll tell you, they really go after it, especially in the spring. Fish it a lot. Love the fly. It's a good uh, pattern for a search pattern. I'm doing the other side first, if you're wondering. Okay, here we are. Flip it over. Tie it in. There. Trim some of that off. Just at the edge. Okay, bring it up. Now we're going to finish it up with another dubbing loop. Heavily weighted, good fly. Put a bead on the front. Pardon me? You put a bead on the front sometimes? A bead? Um, on this one I don't, but yes you can. <coughs> Sorry, I'm mixing myself up here. Trying to do. Go back up there and do the loop, silly. There you go. Okay. Now 
we got the loop. Crochet hook. There we are. Get a couple of twists. And you get in with your material. Now, the material, hold it up to the hook here. When you get this material, especially your dubbing material, take some time to look to go ahead and, and just pinch it and pull it around. See? You can mix your material like that. It's called stacking. Especially when you have different colors, right? You can mix it really good. Like you can get a, a maroon and black there again when we were doing that one fly. This is what I do with it. I stack it and I mix the material. And it really turns out good. So then you go ahead and you bring it into your crochet hook here and your dubbing loop. Bring it up. Something down there. Yeah. All right. We'll loop up. How's that? Looking good there? Let's see it. All right. This fly is turning on me. Just a little bit more. We'll blend it. Again, I'm twisting. Some people like those tools for making their dubbing materials. They used to be around big in the uh, 90s. They first come out. Like I said, habits are hard to break. Actually, we don't use a dubbing loop enough. I think it's really, that's a lost start. Right. Here we go. Head. Bring it in. Remember what I said as beginners, I've always left room for that head. And you get a good you get a good fly that way out of it, and it's not into the eye of the hook. Tie it off good. Give yourself some body material there to tie off too. And also, uh, you can build a nice head at that point with the fly. Now, the fingers. Always you're always moving your hands back and forth with the materials. Okay? You gotta present it, push it back, and grab your, you'll get used to that around the hook, but you know, be careful around the, right? We all know about the point, because it'll let you. Know. But hanging on to your materials. So when you start, you know, like how am I gonna get that head tight? And just pinch and pull it back a bit, it'll go. And then get your head, head built up, you can overlap it a bit, it won't hurt. You're going to have a taper there anyway. Yeah? Nice and tight with the bottom. Build it up. Push. Ah, ready. Tie it in. Okay, 
Everybody's going to, well, where's his whipping tool? I don't have one. Never used it. Okay, this is my technique I've learned over the years. You're going to see it now. I go 90 degrees just like you're using your whipping tool, right, to the hook. See that? It's right to the hook. On this side, lock it in. That's what this little keeper's for. Materials. This is a Renzetti little traveler device that came off a little cheaper vice, but uh, it's been working great for a tool over the years, and I've always used it. Now, you got it locked in, see? Now you're just gonna go right over the top of that material of your, of your, uh, not your line, or your thread, I should say, that is 90 degrees to the hook, okay? Now you're going over top. And that's all you're doing with that whip finisher. Same thing, but this, I can push the material back with my fingers and get it in there, just like the whip finisher. And I get it in there. I use bodkin, hold on to it, grab it, and pull. Done. Nice and tight. And that's the end of that fly. Do you use now, glue? Do you use glue? Yep, you bet. I use. Uh, Head cement and also that hard as nails works pretty good. I've, I've been getting used to that and uh, I really like it. You should look. How many clumps of nail would you put in? Ooh, <laughs> who's counting? Uh, probably eight there are in all. They're like in sections, there's four. Thank you. Right? But uh, at least eight, eight uh, strands of marabou. Now, um, I'm just going to put a little glue on that, or head, Sally Ann's head cement, so yeah, Sally Ann's, that's the good stuff there, you can read it here, oh, yeah, they show that. <laughs> but, uh, works good. And again, just enough to get it on, bring it in, paint it up. That's the nice thing about the fingers, you can give it a dab here or there. Get too much, well, you'll work it out with a bodkin. A little heavy. Okay, that's what these bodkins are for, to clean out the glue. See that? All right, we're done.